or again, welcome to McMaster University course Computing and Software 701 Logic and Discrete Mathematics. We will con we're continuing today with the topic of simple type theory. Uh, we're going to talk about some operators that can be defined in Core Alonzo. Uh, let me remind you that if we go back and look at the different kinds of expressions we have in Core Alonzo. We have only five kinds of expressions, variables, constants, equalities, function applications, and function abstractions. It seems like a very meager logic we have, but it's actually very powerful. We can define many, many different notations and concepts very directly using these five kinds of expressions. And that's what we're going to do now. So the first thing we need to do is to have some definitions for Boolean operators. Now these definitions are notational definitions. So what that means is if we take an example of the first one we have here, uh, we're going to define something of type uh, Omicron, which we'll call T. It stands for truth, and or it, its meaning, it denotes truth. Its meaning is this formula. And this formula says that the function, the identity function on the Boolean equals the identity function in Booleans. So certainly that is a true statement. So we're thinking of this as being, you can think of it as being like an abbreviation for this. And so whenever T sub Omicron appears, we can freely replace that with the expression I have here on the right. So that's the idea of a notational definition. It's just new notation that represents something we could have already defined. Okay, so, so that's how we define the truth value, the truth value true. The way we define the truth value false is we have another equation which says that the constant Boolean function that always returns true equals the identity function. Well, of course, that's false. And then we go and define all the other familiar Boolean operators. So conjunction, implication, negation, and disjunction. And they're all very straightforward. And then once we, once we uh, define them, then we can like once we define, let's say, conjunction as a constant, then we can use this notation to talk about conjunction where the conjunction symbol is written in the infix manner. So these are all straightforward except for conjunction. So let's look at conjunction. So conjunction is a function, a curried function. It takes two Boolean values and gives back an, an equation, an equality. And what it gives back is an equation between two functions. And this function, g, takes two Boolean values and gives back a Boolean value. And in the first case, uh, what g does is, it, uh, I should say that the first function takes g as an input and then gives back g of tt. And that's supposed to equal the function that takes g and gives back g of xy where x, y are the two inputs to conjunction. The only way these two can be true is if x and y have the values true. So that is how we represent conjunction. And like I said, the rest are, are very straightforward. So using these notational definitions, we can introduce the Boolean operators and notation for using them. We can also introduce notation for the quantifiers. So the universal quantifier 
which we will write like this. It says for all x of type alpha, the formula A is true. It stands for this equation. So this equation is the function that maps alpha to truth vet to the truth value true, so it's a constant function, and this maps alpha, each member of alpha to the value of a. And the only way these can be true, only way this can be true, is if is if a is true for all values of of alpha. And then existential quantification is just defined using negation in the obvious way. Okay, so that means we have universal quantification and existential quantification, but we can also define uh, certain definiteness operators. The first is the down arrow, which means that the, the expression is defined, and that's going to be true, or that stands for a equals a. We know a equals a will always be true, provided both a is defined. If a is not defined, this will be false. And then we can define uh, the up arrow, which means that a is undefined using negation with the down arrow. And then we can define a very important kind of equality, which is called quasi-equality. That's what this symbol is, quasi-equality. We say a is quasi equal to b if the following is true. If a being defined and or b defined implies a equals b. Another way of saying this is that either a and b are defined and this is true, or else both a and b are undefined. And finally, we can define the, the concept of total, which we can apply to a function, and that says that for all uh, members of the domain, the function is defined in that member. Okay, so these are all very useful new concepts to have, and we have notation for them. And that makes core Alonzo by itself much more expressive than we would have otherwise. Okay, so now I want to talk about full Alonzo. Full Alonzo is an extension of core Alonzo, and we extend it in four ways. The first way is we add new constructors to the definition of a type and new constructors. Uh, and for these new constructors, we have to add new clauses that explain what they mean in the definition of a frame. So let me, let me try. So we have these new constructors um, to the definition of type. And similarly, we have new constructors to the definition of an expression and new clauses for these constructors that basically give the meaning of these new constructors. Then we make new notational definitions, and then we extend the definitions that we've already defined for core Alonzo to full Alonzo. These are things like what a type is, expression, language, theory, and so forth. Um, these are um, completely straightforward. Um, so full Alonzo has a machinery of core Alonzo, but it also has machinery for def Def, uh, definite, this should be definite descriptions, sets, tuples, and lists. Okay, so let's start with definite description. So we're going to add a new kind of expression. So this is a six kind of expression, a definite description. It has this form. Capital I here is a binder. And it has this form, but we're going to rule out the case when alpha is Omicron, because that's a definite description, really, that has no use for us. So we're just not even going to allow that as a possibility. Okay, so that's the new constructor. We can construct a sixth kind of expression. And the value of this new expression, of a definite description, it's going to be a member D in the domain. Now remember, this is the 
this is we're adding to the normal definition of a general model. Let's just go back and look at what that's going to be. So here's our definition. What we're doing, we have, you can see V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, we're adding V6. Okay, so when we add uh, V6, when we add um, V6, what it's going to say is, this is VD such that the value of B when we change phi so that X goes to D is true. If there's exactly one such D, in other words, this is the unique member of the domain that satisfies B. That satisfies B. Otherwise, this definite description is undefined. So that's the semantics. And now we can define some new notions using notational definitions. We can have bottom alpha. Bottom alpha is basically a canonical expression that's undefined of type alpha. And it's just going to be this formula. The unique x such that x does not equal x. Well, there is no such unique x. We're also going to define an if-then-else expression. Basically, it takes a, something of type Boolean, something of type alpha, and another thing of type alpha. And it's a unique z of type alpha such that, actually, these should be this kind of implication. It should be the unique uh, z such that if w is true, z equals x, and if w is false, z equals y. And then we can use this notation for our if-then-else expression. Basically, it says if a, then b, else c. Okay, so now we can also define all the notation we need and ideas for sets. We can introduce a new type called curly brackets alpha. That will just be this type. This will be the type of unary predicates on alpha, which we can use to represent sets. And then we can define all the normal notions, A being an element of B, A being not an element of B, uh, the empty set, that's just a function that maps members of alpha to false. Uh, another notation for the empty set, we can define uh, an n set. It takes uh, n elements and an x, and it returns uh, the value of x equaling x1 or x equaling x2 and so forth. So basically, a member of this set, uh, when we apply this set to a set of elements, uh, a member will be of that set only if it's one of the n elements we give as arguments. So here's more convenient normal notation for this n set. It's just a set of n elements. Here's the normal set comprehension notation that says, the set of all x of type alpha, such that a holds. We can write that just like this. It's a function that maps uh, x to a. And we can define union in the obvious way, intersection in the obvious way, and complement in the obvious way. OK, so let's move on. We'll add some more things to uh, full Alonzo. Uh, the next thing we're going to add is a product type. So we're going to say alpha cross beta is a type. And then the meaning of this will be, which will be F3. That's going to, we're going to add a new clause to the definition of a frame. The domain for alpha cross beta will be the Cartesian product of those two domains. And then we'll also introduce a new kind of expression, which is a pair. And a pair is an expression of type, a pair of alpha a of type alpha, B of type beta, is an expression of type alpha cross beta. And then what is the meaning of a pair? A meaning of the pair is the pair of the values. And I see we should have a parenthesis there. And then we can introduce tuples. So we can say that a one tuple 
of or the or I should say we can introduce tuples, but first we'll introduce Cartesian products. Uh, a Cartesian product, a one product is just alpha, and then an n product is the Cartesian product of alpha one with the uh, Cartesian product of the remainder. And then we can define tuples. A one tuple is just the one member. An n tuple is going to be a pair of the first member with the n tuples that remain. And then we can define first and second. First basically takes a pair and it returns the unique member of alpha such that there exists a beta such that the pair equals alpha beta. Similarly for for the second um, for the uh, first picks out the first member of a pair. Similarly for second which picks out the second member. Now we can define types. A type is we we'll introduce a new kind of type, which will be square brackets alpha. It is a type. It's meant to represent the type of lists. And uh, the meaning of a domain for this type is going to be the Kleene operator applied to, to D. And that's basically going to be all finite lists of members of D. And then we can have a new kind of expression, list construction which takes a member of type alpha and, uh, and puts it at the beginning of a list. And so this will be a new type of expression of type square bracket alpha. And then what's the meaning of this? The meaning of this will be we take the value of A, we put it at the front of the value B, which is a list. And then we can define the empty list. The empty list is going to be the unique list that does not have the form, does not equal a list we get with list construction. We can have an alternate way of defining it. We can then define a singleton list and an end list, uh, doing things the obvious way. We can define head and tail uh, in the obvious way. Now, one thing you should notice here is that um, if we took the head of a member X, which is the empty list, then there is going to be no unique A such that there exists a Y, such that when we append A to Y, we get X. So head and tail are, or head and tail are actually partial functions, which is what we want. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is a subtype. We can say a subtype of a type is any expression of this curly brackets alpha type. So in other words, it represents a subset of the domain of alpha. And we can have new ways of writing down quantifiers. So instead of writing down, uh, uh, so actually these are restrictions. So, a res so we can write down a lambda expression, which is a restriction. We want to restrict x to it the values in A. So we can write that down like this. We'll use our if then else expression. It basically says the function that maps x. Uh, if x is a member of A, then it maps it to B. Otherwise, it's undefined. And for, let's say, universal quantification, it stands for this. It's for all x. If x is in A, that implies B. And existential uh, quantification restricted to A will be there exists an X such that if X is a member of A and B holds and something similar for iota. And finally we have some notation for making our uh, sequences of binders more compact. So we can write for all X1 in alpha 1, x2, and alpha 2, and so forth, instead of writing this bulkier kind of formula. Same way with existential, existential quantification. And then if all the alphas, if all these alphas are the same, we can just put one alpha at the end. Same way with existential quantification. 
Now, this notation is very interesting because this basically is going to define a function that takes a tuple where the members of the tuple are x1 through xn. So that stands for this function, the function that takes a tuple p and returns the unique y such that there exists x's so p equals these x's and then y will be the value of that p. Okay, so that um, completes uh, our lecture today and we will continue next time with expressivity in Alonzo. So uh, thank you very much. See you next time.